ambassador. Okay, for communion today, uh, I'm going to be using stuff, scriptures, and comments of commentary related to John chapter 6 and the events that we will be talking about were, they took place just before the Passover, a year before the crucifixion. And at the time, the people of Israel were under the Roman heel, and they were suffering, and they were looking for deliverance from the Romans. And at the, at the this same time, they, these people were thinking of, in terms of blood, flesh, lambs, and unleavened bread, and they longed for a new Moses who would deliver them from Roman bondage, because they looked back at their ancestors and remembered that Moses had uh, been used to bring the Israelites out of bondage in, 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 in Egypt. And so, it says from, the, from these people, this is related to the people who were, were fed with the two fish and the five loaves of bread. And it was a miraculous thing that happened. And when they found, uh, you know, that Christ had uh, fed them, and they looked around the next day and they saw he was, he was not where they, uh, where they had left him. They said, where did they go? He asked him where he went. He answered, I'll tell you the truth. You are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. And on him God has placed uh, his seal of approval. And it goes on and says in verse, uh, chapter 20, uh, verse 28 of chapter 6, Then they ask him, What must we do? To do the works God requires, and Jesus asked it. The work God is uh, the work of God is this: to believe in the one He has sent. And so He was telling them to believe. And, uh, and and when they believe, then they will do the things through love that God would want them to do. So uh, so they ask Him, what miraculous sign did? Will you give us that we may uh, see it and believe you? What will you do? So they want to know what Christ would do. He said, Our fathers ate the man in the desert, and in his written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, it is not Moses who gives, who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. So, this chapter is not normally, I guess, thought about as a, uh, a communion chapter, but the information here can be correlated and, and applied in, in certain ways to that. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. So he's telling them that the real bread of life is himself, and that that is what they need. The forefathers ate the manna in the desert, and they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and, and, uh, and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will uh, live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the world, for the life of the world. And so he's telling you that he's here. I'm giving you my life, and my life is what you need. And it encompasses more than just uh, you know the, the sacrifice. It encompasses also 
the way of life that we choose to live as, 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 as we accept. Then the Jews began to argue, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real thing. And whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. So, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. So he's giving them an instruction that they needed so that they could understand that it's not only the physical that they, they need, you know, back in the Old Testament, uh, the scripture there, Christ even told you that uh, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So God is giving information that they provide it hard to, to understand. The words when they had all okay. The words when they had all had enough to eat shows that uh, John intended to stress that a miracle took place. And some scholars tried to explain away the miracle by saying this was a uh, merely a sacramental or symbolic meal, and others say the miracle was in the people sharing. But this rationalization are far from the clear meaning of John's word. And so there's more there than uh, some of the scholars think. Oh, 
on and says, uh, Jesus' hearers must have been uh, shocked and puzzled by the, by the saying, but the, the puzzle is unlocked by understanding that Jesus was speaking of his making atonement by his death and giving life to those who personally appropriated him. And faith in Christ's death brings eternal life. So we have faith in Christ that we will have that eternal life. Jesus, just as just good food and drink sustains physical life, so Jesus, the real spiritual food and drink, sustains his followers spiritually. So we need uh, Jesus spiritually, and uh, his flesh and blood gives eternal life to those who receive him. So here we are, we receive Christ, we ask, accept the call, and uh, we live the life that he gives us, and we live the way he directs us as much as we're able and we continue to see his wisdom and how to do that. And so he provides that. He provides a way for us to do that. And he helps us through his spirit and through our yieldedness to him. And so uh, that is how we get to, to know and understand what God wants us to do. Uh, he promised to uh, sustain a relationship with those who remain in him, <coughs> excuse me, so that life will be continuously experienced. <coughs> it's not enough simply to have life. Life must be sustained and developed. And there must be provision for daily growth. And we get that daily growth through uh, Bible study and prayer and fellowship and relationship with each other. That's why we come together here. This is a part of that, that development and growth. And so when we come together for a fellowship and we come together and have a communion, we are actually sharing in the life of Christ. We're learning how to share in a life, how to live that life. And then we take the elements of communion, which uh, tell us that we accept and that we are willing to be humbly submitted to God and to remember that he did give his son as a sacrifice for our sins. And so the bread that we take is that broken body as the uh, elements are represented of, and the wine is the blood. So they're eating his body and they're drinking his blood. And there's a tremendous spiritual uh, meaning to this. And we can delve into that and, and dig deeper and deeper and see that more and more. So I'm going to ask God's blessing on the bread and the wine and the ushers to come and uh, direct you. Find this, please. Precious Father Almighty in heaven, you're merciful to us and so very kind in ways that we don't even understand. We thank you that you are, and we thank you that you are the creator and sustainer, and the one who gives us all that we need. And certainly, we need you, and we need your forgiveness, and we are continually seeking forgiveness, and asking you to help us to grow, and to become spiritually strong, and as we eat the bread of life, drink the blood of life, the body and blood of Jesus Christ through our living and through the symbols that we take to remember that he gave himself for us. We ask you to help us to be able to be alert to these things and to serve your purposes as we go. So we ask you to bless the elements as we partake and help us to have the mind to go on and think about what a tremendous blessing and an awesome payment has been made to cleanse us of our sins. And we ask you these things and we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And when you take the other, just go back to your seats and we'll all take them at the same time.
just as a little levity, somebody should have wasted a lot of his blood on that <laughs> trade here. <laughs> but uh, this bread we take uh, is to remind us that we remember that Christ did live his life on earth as a human being and he suffered all the things that he did for us. And then, even as he said before the foundation of the world, he gave his life. And then he came as a human being in due time and suffered it as a physical human being. And so we commemorate that by taking the As he hung on the cross, the Romans, who were representatives actually of the entirety of humanity, thought they were in control of what was known in the world at that time. They beat him and tortured him and spilled his blood all over the ground. It's like the whole wine on, on, the, on the tray there. But only it was much more so. And so we remember that. And uh, we're thankful because we have so much to be thankful for even in this suffering. He was joyful. And we need to be joyful and thankful for what God has done for us. So we take this as representative of that. generous with a joyful smile on your face and they will joyfully take 